What's up, YouTube? So we have further confirmation as to why we stack gold and silver and why we have it in our own possession. This article recently came out talking about how China plans to stimulate the economy and they plan on doing this by dropping the reserve requirements for the central banks in China. So this is completely ridiculous because we all know that this is based upon fractional reserve banking and this is essentially the practice of banks creating money out of nothing. And this is going to have detrimental effects when it comes to the Chinese economy. And we're already seeing what happens when you have extremely low reserve requirements when it comes to these banks in the United States. Let's go to the intro and then we'll get right into this video. Okay, so let's get right into this video. Now, I just want to reiterate what you're seeing going on right now in the United States in terms of inflation and the devaluation of your currency is happening all over the world. And this article is just confirming that this is a global problem. See, we now have China essentially reducing the reserve requirement for their banks. Now, this is all talking about fractional reserve banking. And if you don't know what fractional reserve banking is, well, it's very simple. It's evil. I've done entire videos on this. I'll do a quick synopsis on what it actually is, um, but I highly recommend that you go ahead, check the link in the description because I do a whole video and a whole breakdown of what fractional reserve banking is and why we need to end this insane practice. But here's the quick breakdown. Let's say you have a 10% reserve requirement. So let's say that Johnny has, I don't know, $100,000. And Johnny deposits that $100,000 in a bank. Based on a 10% reserve requirement, the bank is required by law to hold 10% in reserves. So 10% of 100,000, that's 10,000. And then the other 90,000, they can essentially lend out. And let's say they lend that out to another person. Well, then the process starts again. That person takes that $90,000, they put it into their bank, the bank keeps 10%, and then they take the other 90% and lend that out. And in total, you can essentially create nine times the original amount through loans. So for example, if the original amount that was deposited was $100,000, you can essentially expand that out through loans and the total will be $900,000. And get this, you can create 10 times the original amount in new deposits. So again, if your initial deposit was $100,000, you can essentially create $1 million worth of new deposits. It's complete fakery and it devalues your work. That's the issue. And they're going to see what happens here in China. Again, they're dropping it by 25 basis points. That's literally a quarter of 1%. Not that much. But the point being, we're now seeing that the reserve requirement in China is around 7.8%. So that means they have to keep 7.8% of the deposit on reserves. The other remaining 92.2% they can essentially loan out. And this is just going to further decimate the middle class and it's going to crush the Chinese people. Okay, like it's crushing the people in the United States. Now, many people don't know this. And many of my subscribers, those in the know, were telling me because I was still under the impression that the United States was operating under the 10% reserve requirement. But that all ended when CV-19 hit. Okay, so check this out. Back in March of 2020, they actually dropped the reserve requirements for banks to 0%. And based on my understanding, the reserve requirement is still sitting at 0%. I can't find any information about them raising the reserve requirement. So based on what I know and my understanding, the reserve requirement for these banks is still at 0%. This is literally infinite amounts of money that can be created. There is no reserve requirement. So let me just give you a quick example. Let's use Johnny again. Johnny deposits $100,000 into the bank. Well, guess what happens? The bank doesn't have to keep any of that in reserves, they can essentially take that $100,000 and lend it out to another person. And that process just keeps repeating and it's essentially infinite. It's an infinite amount of money that can be lended out. And this is why everything is getting more expensive. This is why your dollar is buying less. Again, there is an inverse relationship. The more money that you have in the system or currency, fiat, the more your purchasing power of that fiat will be reduced. Again, there's an inverse relationship between the money supply and your purchasing power. And that's what's going on today. 
they're going to blame it on the sickness, okay? The sickness was a cover for what's actually going on. They knew that all around the world, right, they were going to have a sovereign debt crisis and that all of these fiats were going to essentially implode. They needed a cover. It was the sickness that caused the devaluation of your currency. And now we need a reset. We need to reset you to a central bank digital currency. It will be great. It's completely ridiculous. The same way they're telling you that cars for the past three years have essentially increased in value. However, when you look back in history, that has never happened. And again, what are they telling you? Oh, it's because it's a chip shortage. We have supply chain issues. That's baloney. It's because your dollar is being devalued and it's taking more and more of those worthless notes to buy the same amount of goods. That's what's going on. Again, that's my opinion, but just piecing it all together, this is essentially what's happening. And so look at what's happening all around the world. This is not just happening in the United States, okay? It's happening in China. Like this article is just confirming what's going on. These central banks are essentially devaluing all of your work. It's evil. People need to understand this. When you go to work, these central banks are essentially nullifying what you're doing. Oh, you work 70 hours at a job? Well, guess what? With a few clicks of a mouse and dropping the reserve requirement, those 70 hours are now worthless because the bank has been given access to infinite money creation. And again, you have to get this through your head. The more money that's in the system, the more your purchasing power is going to be reduced. This is why gold and silver is essential because there is a finite amount. You can't create more of it. That is the key, and that's what people have to understand. No more manipulation through fractional reserve banking and Federal Reserve printing. You either have it or you don't. That is the power of sound money, which is gold and silver. You know, people are gonna say, oh, well, you know, Bitcoin has a finite amount. Yes, it does, but it's a digital token backed by nothing. It was created from nothing. I can go ahead and create a digital token and make a finite amount of these tokens and then someone else could do that, and then someone else can do that, and that essentially waters it down. You can't say the same about gold and silver. I can't just go out and say, yeah, I'm gonna make some more gold. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and make some more silver. You can't do that, okay? So this is why sound money is so essential. People just need to understand what's going on, and then they'll understand why gold and silver is essential to debt. It's not a barbarous relic. It will never be a barbarous relic. It is a tool to preserve your wealth. It is a tool to preserve the fruits of your labor. God gave us gold and silver so that we could realize the fruits of our labor and enjoy the fruits of our labor. What's going on right now is completely evil. And I'm gonna keep saying that because it is. It's devaluing your work. You're essentially being made into a slave. You're not getting paid. And there may be some thinking right now that, well, I'm getting paid, I just got a raise in the last year. Really? You got a raise? Well, what is inflation at right now? Because inflation will cancel out whatever you got for a raise. They play games with the numbers all the time. It's like with raising minimum wage. Yeah, they'll raise minimum wage, but then everything else will go up around you. It just cancels it out. It's all fakery. We have to stop operating in these fictitious debt notes known as the dollar, and we need to get back into sound money. That is the only way forward. Otherwise, we're gonna continue to be slaves in this system. That is the truth. And you have to openly admit what's going on. See, I know, I am a slave, I know this. I am a slave to the system because without sound money, they can essentially devalue what you're doing. They're putting invisible chains on you. That's what people have to understand. And a lot of people just don't get this, right? They think that because they have a lot of money in the bank, a lot of fiat, right? Digital numbers on the screen, they think that they're wealthy. Well, what happens when they essentially inflate that currency to oblivion? What happens to all of your wealth? It disappears. Because again, the inverse relationship, the more money there is in the system, the more your purchasing power is going to be reduced. It's very simple, very, very simple. People try to overcomplicate this. It's not complicated. They try to make it complicated. It's very simple. You either have it or you don't, okay? That's just logic, that's common sense. You can't be creating money out of nothing and think that there's gonna be no repercussions. People like to tell you that, oh, well, through fraction reserve banking and the Federal Reserve, this allowed us to have a wonderful life and to have you know, two cars and a big house. Well, maybe for you if you're a boomer, but not for me and my younger generation. We're getting absolutely crushed right now. And I'm not trying to be arrogant when I say that, but I'm just being honest with you. 
yes, during the 1940s, 1950s, that was an amazing time. You didn't have as much debt or money creation in the system. You were essentially able to eat the fat of the land during that time. Now, though, we're seeing just individuals get crushed by this. There is absolutely no way you can get out of this. And I mean, if anyone wants to argue with me on this, just go back to 1950. One income was enough for five kids, a stay at home mom and a big home. That was enough. I've done whole videos on this. I'm kind of wasting my breath going over this over and over again. I'm not trying to play the pity card or anything like that. I'm just trying to be a realist and I'm trying to bring this to people's attention because that's what needs to happen. I'm so tired of people who comment and say, oh, you know, you're being really negative. You know, you have to think positive. No, see, that's what's wrong. You can't just think positive and think you're gonna get out of this. You have to be a realist and you have to identify the problems and then fix them. I'm tired of this positive thinking mentality. You thinking positive is not going to help the situation and it's not gonna help your kids and it's not gonna help your grandkids. We saw what positive thinking got us. It got us complete complacency and now we're in the position we're in now. Also, don't get it twisted. Faith and positive thinking are two different things. I'm all about having faith, but again, I'm a realist and I understand that your mind can only do so much. We need to get back to our Christian roots in this country and start relying on God and not on the power of positive thinking. Again, if you're relying on positive thinking, you are not relying on God. You are relying on your own doing and you are always going to fall short. We will always fall short. We need to have God in the equation. So with all of that being said, we need to start accepting the reality of the situation. You know, is it uncomfortable and is it a downer bringing up these topics? Yes, but if you don't bring them up and you keep brushing it under the rug, they're going to stay there and they're going to morph into something even bigger. You need to address these issues, okay? They need to be addressed and they need to be talked about. And that is why free speech is so essential. So you can talk about these subjects. They need to be talked about and they need to be addressed. The majority of the population has no idea what fractional reserve banking is and they don't understand how it's devaluing their work. That's the problem. Education is key. And I'm not talking about the education they're giving you. You need to educate yourself the same way these elites, these 1% are educating themselves. Their education is completely different. They know exactly how the system works. You need to be wise as serpents but harmless as doves, as the Bible says. So we need to start bringing awareness to what's going on here. This is a controlled demolition, in my opinion. Why would you continue to drop the reserve requirements on these central banks? You know the outcome. They say they're trying to get inflation under control. Then why don't you raise the reserve requirement on these central banks? You want to know why? Because it's a controlled demolition. This is the plan to essentially devalue and destroy these paper currencies, these fiats. That is the goal. Their actions are telling you what they're trying to do. Don't listen to what they're saying. Watch what they're doing. That's what you need to do. So you guys let me know below. What do you think about all this? I'd love to get your opinions below. And as always, if you found the video helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to this YouTube channel so you get more videos on both gold and silver. And as always, God bless.